Justice League. Does anyone have a guess as to what Tom Garrett's accent in this was? Canadian or, I don't know, Midwestern? I don't know. No way, you know, it's just, I don't know, maybe he's just got a kind of Keanu Reeves of Bill and Ted thing going on. Just kind of like that other kid in this, you know, the one who has sex and is not happy when he finds out he has to have sex for another 10 minutes, you know, he has to last for that long. I don't know, I guess the chick saw the, I think, last movie, you know, where sex was apparently, I don't know, a minute or so. I guess the guy was Al Bundy in disguise. I like that Jason is properly badass again. And he's kind of like nitroglycerin this, you know, he's kind of unstable, you don't know when he's going to explode, but he will, you know. And he's kind of moved on to a thing of killing several people with one blow. He chops up like three people with one slash of the machete, you know, the guys playing paintball and the one girl. I love the, you know, him getting shot with the paintball. And then he looks down like, what the, what is wrong with you, dude? <laughs> Did you just try to take down a massive dude with a paintball gun, even though you had just seen him slash through three people with no trouble? That's another thing. He really has absolutely no trouble taking them out in this. They are no match for him. This is kind of what I was expecting from this franchise, from the reputation. So maybe this one is the one people are you know, thinking of when they're like, Oh, he's like totally superhuman and, you know, zombie and he can slash through several people and he's got superhuman strength. And I liked the, I don't know, spear kind of thing he uses early on. And, you know, he picks up the machete from that guy that we at first think is Jason, who's, you know, one of the paintball players. The James Bond thing in the opening credits, what the heck were they thinking? You know, he walks past, turns around, slashed. What the heck? I... Maybe it was an attempt at a joke. Maybe it was one of the many attempts at jokes that really didn't work out in this. I don't know. But other than that, the opening was really good. You know, lightning strike reanimates him, and... Yeah. It is, of course, yet again, suspiciously difficult for him to kill the lead characters, you know, whenever he's, excuse me, grabbed someone who is supposed to survive, he takes a long ass time to do it. He couldn't even properly drown Tommy, even though he had plenty of time to. And you have, you know, he's trying to pull his face crushing move on the girl Megan. You know, and it takes him forever, and, oh, got distracted by Tommy, you know. I like that Tommy can somehow form a full circle around his little boat there just by pouring gasoline on two sides of it. And I also like that it somehow moves further away than he poured the gasoline once he actually lights it. What is it with him and, like, matches? You know, first scene, he, you know screws it up over and over. Dude, it's raining. What do you think is going to happen? And then at the end, he can't quite find them in his pockets. Yeah. I kind of like the line, what were you going to be when you grew up? Not the funniest, but it worked out. You know, the children, those two children were used, what, three times? And it just kind of worked, you know? Did anybody actually believe you would kill any children in this? I personally didn't see it happening at all. I don't know, I just don't think they'd actually go there. It's 
not that common for horror movies too, and I mean they were already taking tons of flack from parents and educators around the nation. You know, the moment they actually kill a child, yeah, you probably aren't you know, getting to make any more movies, and some of all that dough you've raked in on the many unnecessary sequels will go straight back to the parents who shelled it out in the first place in lawsuits, so no, not gonna happen. I don't see it, you know, I would be happy to be disproven by one of the, well not happy, but it would be interesting anyway, by one of the other sequels that I haven't watched yet. It was kind of interesting that Jason could smash that chick's head into the wall of the, you know, the driving house thing there, and it didn't smash her head, it just, you know, somehow he bent the metal to her face. I, I get that he's, you know, extremely strong, but her face isn't, okay? It would be crushed before it. Anyway, I thought her constantly, you know, falling over. I mean, the way they did it was, it, it worked out. You believed that that was what was happening, but man, was that guy a jerk to constantly be, you know, driving the car, braking suddenly and stuff to make her fall over and stuff like that. It seemed like one more failed attempt at humor. I did like that this didn't take itself too seriously. You know, you have the gravedigger staring into the camera saying, what kind of people would find this kind of stuff entertaining, basically, you know. It... I think it was a good idea to have a little bit of fun with it because you can't have this many sequels and not have just some fun with you know the overall concept with what they're doing with the movies I think it worked out well with the climax you know you have him trying to get the chain around Jason's neck to keep him down there, you know, with the big rock, and, you know, that's basically what the struggle is, and Jason is just trying to kill Tommy. It was a good idea, and it worked out pretty well, just the... It was different, you know, it wasn't just, okay, let's see if we can chop him into pieces, or let's see if we can stab him a bunch of times, you know, Something different because by now the audience knows, and so does Tommy, that that isn't going to cut it. I mean, if he survives, you know, the kind of stabbing that he faced at the end of 4, yeah, he can kind of not really be stabbed to death anymore. You know, takes a lightning bolt to resurrect him, and which I guess makes it kind of stupid to put him in water, because water and electricity, but whatever. Maybe he'll come back as freaking Electro of the Spider-Man comics next, I don't know. It was kind of cool that he opened the one good eye there at the end. You know, the telling us he will be back. I don't really know why this is really the first time they did so because, you know, I think that is a good way to end a slasher flick, you know, saying no, he's not dead. You know, whether or not there are sequels, it's just kind of, he's still out there, that's much more interesting than, okay, he just had to be stabbed 47 times. Whew. However, the whole drowning thing, so now he did actually drown originally. I guess when they decided that he was going to come back to life, they decided that he did die originally, you know, age 13. I mean, from the second and onwards, wasn't it kind of the idea that, oh, he never drowned, he just, people thought he did, but, you know, he swam ashore somewhere else and he's been hiding out for all this time. 
you know, killing animals to survive. And so now he did actually drown back then at age 13. And then he came back. And then he came back another time. And then he was cremated. And the body is still buried somewhere. Yeah, I don't think they really have this entirely down, but okay. You kind of have to pick and choose what of this is going to be canon, you know. And I suppose that is what I have to say about Friday the 13th, Part 6, Jason Lives. So, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.